First of all, we heard um, Eubank Senior saying, this is dangerous, my son, I don't want the fight to go ahead. Then it looks as if we're going to get it on, and now this happens. Is it a definite no-no? Here we are Thursday, the fight Saturday night. Big crowd, hotels booked, trains booked, you name it. Can this still, can we still get it on? I want to say no, but the answer is yes, sadly, because... Um, there's a major systemic failure in boxing with the way that we process adverse findings when it mm. comes to comes to drug tests. You just heard Connor Ben just say there, I've committed no violations. And as it stands right now, I know this is mad for, for the audience that are listening this morning. I've given all the information that they've been given. He's absolutely true. No rules as it stands right now at what time? 22 8 on a Thursday morning. No rules right now have been broken, just proving that there is a major systemic failure. Well, who's, called moment, it, who's called it off then? the British Boxing Board of Control, the sanctioning body. And that's, the, and that's again, highlighting the systemic failure that we have right now, because right now we have a promoter, one of the leading promoters in this country, entering legal conversation with the sanctioning body in order to send a fighter into a fight at the weekend that has an adverse finding on a drug test. That can't be right. That well, cannot be right for that fight to go ahead. Adam, 100%. And when you think of the history um, involving in, in both fathers with, with, with tragedy in the boxing yeah. ring, whether it's McLean and watching guys like that, Jeremy McLean, it's the, 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 uh, that in itself would indicate. Imagine something happened. Imagine something went, uh, happened. The fight went ahead at the weekend, and something adverse happened. It would be an absolute disaster. Absolutely, boxing would get dragged through the mud. Um, and the, the sad thing is about this, guys, is that everybody can see it. Everybody, you're talking about it now that that is a distinct possibility, but it's going to take the fact of that happening for somebody to actually do something and wise up and change their attitudes towards towards adverse findings in drug tests in, in, in boxing. And that, that's the that's the sad state of affairs. Well, I can see in your happen. face you're sad about this. Let me let me for the, the listeners, Adam, let me read this out. This is Matchroom, okay, their statement. We've been made aware that a random anti doping test for Conor Ben conducted by the Voluntary Anti Doping Association returned an adverse analytical finding for trace amounts of a fertility drug. Mr Ben has since passed a doping control test conducted by the UK Anti-Doping Agency, the Anti-Doping Authority to which the British Board of Boxing Control has delegated its doping control testing for the bout. Mr Ben has passed all doping control tests conducted by UKAD. Both fighters have taken medical and legal advice, are aware of all relevant information and wish to proceed with a bout this Saturday. Hmm. Well, just on that, so then people fully understand what's happened here. Voluntary anti-doping, VADA, are a voluntary service. They're exactly that. You've got to sign up to it voluntarily and you've got to pay for it, of which Conor Ben and Chris Eubank Jr. have done. And that is where the uh, adverse finding has come. It's come from a, a test done by VADA. Uh, I believe that the findings were, re were relayed to Conor Ben and his team two weeks ago. UK anti-doping are the, the testing service that the British Boxing Board of Control adhere to. And as it says in that statement, that he has passed all those uh, tests, but it doesn't give you the date of when those tests were. So let's say yeah. at the back end of September, right. the VADA test took place. And then the UK test took place yesterday. Who's to say that the thing that was in his system right. two weeks ago is in his system today? That for me doesn't wash at all. And this is where the systemic failure is absolutely prevalent right now. We have signed up for, for testing. That test has flagged an adverse finding. Why are we ignoring what has been found in that test? Because that's exactly what we're doing right now. We're mm -hmm. ignoring it. We're deciding, well, hang on a minute. It does, that doesn't fit with our narrative right now. That doesn't work for us. So we're actually going to use these rules over here. No, mate, come on. Let's get real. The guy had something in his system. Let's sort that thing out first. Let's sort it out. Let's get to the bottom of it before we proceed with a fight. Because as you pointed out two seconds ago, Ali, what if something bad happens at the weekend? Yeah. Boxing gets dragged through the mud, and it's not just an Eddie Hearn show or a Matchroom show. This is the whole of boxing. It gets dragged through the mud. The mainstream, the mainstream will absolutely disown the sport. Sponsorships will clear off. All these fighters getting paid decent dough to be contesting for these championship belts on a Saturday night, that will no longer be a, a thing because they'll run for the hills. Why would you want to be involved with the Wild West? There's Ad no rules. Adam, tell me, right now, before we go to the break, the reputation of boxing after AJ and Fury, this mm. now, where, does, where are we? I mean, it's an absolute shambles, isn't it? It's an absolute shambles if this fight goes ahead at the weekend, Ali. 
And that's, that's all I can say. And I just hope that people come to their senses. Like I said at the start of this, no rules have actually been broken. So therefore, legally, this fight could go ahead mm -hmm. at the weekend. But I think there's a moral question yeah. to ask ourselves coming up to the fight at the weekend. Come on, guys, let's get real. Let's just pump the brakes on it. I know that there's a lot of money on the table and there's money that people will lose. I get that. But is it worth risking a kid's life at the weekend? Because that's what we're doing. We're risking it. Nobody knows for sure that he's going to come out of there safe. So let's pump the brakes. Let's ask ourselves at what cost are we willing to go? And let's just take a breath. Adam, nice one. Let's see what Thanks, happens. Adam. Hopefully we'll have more take today. I just, I just my, oh, final, shambles, my final little bit though, um, Eubank Jr. must know, you know, he's looked into this. He must know and think, no, no, I'll fight him. So if he's happy and they're broken no rules, I don't see the massive problem. I'll, I'll tell you the problem. He's failed the drugs test, whether we like it or not. Right? That's the problem. So how can the fight go ahead? But they've just said everything's, oh, everything's he's just, okay. He, he's just said it, that he hasn't done anything wrong, which is, in itself is a complete and utter contradiction in terms. So how, how can you fail a drug test but not be doing anything ben wrong? Mr Ben has passed a doping control test conducted by UK Anti-Doping. The Anti-Doping Authority, which the British Board of Boxing Control has delegated its doping control testing for the bout. Mr Ben has passed all doping control tests conducted by UCAD. And the bit before it says, we've made aware of a random anti-doping test for Corner Ben conducted by the Voluntary Anti-Doping Association returned an adverse analytical finding for a trace of amounts of fertility drug. Well, you got the pictures or something? You don't want to see this fight? Of course I do. Talk Sport Breakfast with Alan Brazil. Thursday and Friday morning, 6 till 10. On AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app, and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.